Good morning, Calvary. It's Pastor Chad here with your word for the day. And today we're looking at Proverbs chapter 14. Proverbs 14. And I want to share a verse with you that is probably going to make you go, what is he talking about? It's Proverbs 14, 4. And it says this, Where there are no oxen, the manger is clean, but abundant crops come by the strength of the ox. Where there are no oxen, the manger is clean. Now, uh, I'm going to equate this this way. If you have a messy life, you have a productive life. Now, uh, think about this. I love it when my grandkids come to the house. Uh, I mean, I've got two that are almost two. I've got a four-year-old and a six-year-old grand, grandchild. And, and so uh, when they come to our house, they just absolutely devastate our house. I mean, our house is, is never perfect, but it's always clean and neat because it's just Merelda and I there, and, and it's, uh, it's in order. And right up until the moment that the grandkids come, and they head to the playroom, which is one of our spare bedrooms that we filled with toys for them, and the toys are everywhere uh, in just a matter of seconds. And then they, they want to go outside, and they, they go out back, and, and they just devastate our patio and play with water guns and, and little kiddie pools and water balloons, and, and they just make a mess everywhere they go. And they come inside and they want a snack and, and of course they're going to spill the snack and they're going to spill on the floor and they don't care and, and we don't care. But our house is a mess because it's a place of life. It's a place of fruitfulness. And, uh, and I'm just thankful for that mess because it reveals the, the reality that I've got grandkids that are in my life that are blessing my life. When our children were, were younger and they were home, uh, I felt the same way. You know, no, we did make them pick up their rooms and make sure the house was neat, but when their friends would come over, uh, they'd get messy and it'd get fun, and we're okay with that because it's a sign of life. And that's what it means when Solomon says, where there are no oxen, the manger is clean, but abundant crops come by the strength of the ox. Because if, if everything is neat and in order, it's not producing anything. Uh, a clean manger, a clean stable, it's, it means that you're, you're, you don't have life, you don't have animals there. But if you've got oxen there, you've got hay everywhere, you've got oxen dung everywhere, you've got oxen smell everywhere, it's messy, but that's how you're going to have the crops. And so what does that matter to us? Uh, you know, what does that mean for us? Because you can have fruitfulness, uh, but if you have fruitfulness, you're not going to have cleanliness. Uh, I grew up hearing this uh, adage, which is not biblical in the least, and that is cleanliness is next to godliness. Don't know if any of you heard that, don't know if you believe that, but it's wrong. In fact, Proverbs says it's wrong. In fact, if you have cleanliness, you have emptiness. You have fruitlessness. And, and so uh, we, shouldn't, we should value cleanliness. Look, if you, if you fix me dinner, I want your kitchen to be clean. Um, it, it, you know, I, want, I want to be clean when I come to work. I want to be clean when I get, you know, get up. I, I get all that. But we're not talking about cleanliness. We're talking about caring more about cleanliness than about fruitfulness. And here's why that matters. It matters because we're a church that has a mission, and that mission is to lead people to a life-changing relationship with Jesus Christ through the love of his people and the power of his truth. And the mission trumps everything. And guess what? The mission is messy because it involves people, and it involves people that I really love because our church values children, and children are messy. Have you ever noticed that? Kids create a mess. Just like my grandkids come into my house, when we have kids come into the church, they're going to create a mess. Uh, there's a reason that we built Sweetwater with concrete floors and, and block walls because we don't want them to destroy stuff. And it's a whole lot easier if people aren't complaining about the messes that kids made on the carpet. That's just truth. And, and we know kids are going to make a mess and we want children in our church. We want students in our church. We value them and so we prioritize them and we welcome them and the mess and the noise and the chaos that they create because it's signs of life. And, and that's so important to me. Uh, here at Calvary, you may not know this, but we have, uh, before the COVID thing, we had over 300 children a weekend on our campuses. And, and we still, right now, since we reopened, are still having almost 200 a weekend. Uh, Calvary Christian Academy, our school has 300 students enrolled. Uh, I mean, that's on two campuses, but they're busy places with lots of students and lots of noise and lots of mess, and we love that. We've got about 150 teenagers involved on a regular basis through our student ministries, from five, six nights uh, up through our junior high and high school, going to camps and things like that. So we value kids because we're not afraid of the mess. You know, what, you know what's a mark of dying churches? 
dying churches value clean facilities over children. I know that because I've been a part of them. I've been a part of churches where they fought over the fact that the kids were making a mess and ruining the carpet and getting their handprints on the pews and they're sticky and they're messy and they're noisy and they get in the way. And you know what happened to those churches? The kids went away, the families went away, the churches died. Because they valued a clean manger over the mess of the ox. I, I choose the ox, I choose the kids, I choose the mess, I choose the chaos. I want to reach people uh, because I, we're, we're not going to avoid messes uh, and sacrifice the mission. We're going to lean into the mission rather than worry about the mess. So what does that mean for you? I want to challenge you to think differently about the messes that you encounter in life. The messes that you encounter. When you see a mess, what do you think? Do you think, who are the irresponsible people who did this? Or do you think, great, there's life here. There's, there's, there's people here. There's, there's people who are young here. I don't want you to be angry. I don't want you to be frustrated. I want you to be delighted that someone is there making a mess. Because when we value the stuff more than we value the people, we fail at the mission. And I want us to succeed in the mission. And, and that means in your life that you have to look at the messes and see God's redemptive hand in those messes rather than just get angry about them. Because the messes are evidence of our strength and the abundant harvest that is going to come. So I just want to challenge you to see the messes a little bit differently. Uh, see them as a sign of life and praise God for the messes because where there are no oxen, the manger is clean. But abundant crops come by the strength of the ox. I hope you have uh, enjoyed this kind of strange uh, proverb and I hope you have a beautiful, messy day. God bless.